who are settlers and those of us who are descendants of settlers came to this land, there were people here. Many nations of people lived and live on the land that we call Canada, given responsibility by the creator to be stewards of this land and all that lives on it. We know these people as the First Nations. Today, as we remember what it means to live thankfully, let us give thanks for the First Nations of this land, wherever we might be right now. And we remember that at Westminster, we worship God on the historic and the unceded territory of the Neutral, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee of the Six Nations. As Christ's people, let us be people of truth, of love, and of reconciliation. Exciting and very uh, full week-long event for preachers all across the world. Um, unfortunately, can't take place in person this year, and so thankfully for many of us is being offered for free online. And so um, I thought it seemed silly to not take advantage of this and decided to make it into a, uh, a purposeful week-long um, time of exploring what others have to say about preaching, especially preaching during these times, um, and to just connect with colleagues all across the world. So I will, um, while I'll be at home, not be available in many of the same ways. Uh, Sarah Lynn is always available through our uh, church office uh, email address, and she checks the phone messages regularly. And, um, and, and also on Facebook. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, the other ways you can connect with her. There are many. Um, we also will have Reverend Carrie uh, Martins, who will be joining us on Sunday to offer the leadership of the worship. Um, so that's really exciting. We've had her take a service before. And uh, for those who have not heard, uh, she has been accepted into the beginnings of the program of admissions into the United Church of Canada. She is currently an ordained minister in the Mennonite Church and is working towards becoming a United Church minister. So we're excited to be able to have her uh, gifts and her talents on this uh, a week from today on Sunday. Um, as I won't be uh, available, there are two clergy of Waterloo who are more than happy to spend some time um, with those who might need a little extra pastoral care support during this coming week. And that's Reverend Jen of Emmanuel United Church and um, Reverend Joe of Parkminster United Church. We'll send out a email with contact information for them later today uh, for those. Um, they're more than happy to help, so don't feel like maybe you should wait or you're uncertain. Um, they're wonderful, lovely people. Many of you know them, and they would be really happy and thrilled to be able to support Westminster and all of us um, in this coming week if you need that. Um, are there any other announcements that folks would like to share in this time? All right. Well then, friends, um, sorry, I'm just, uh, I have a note here from Cynthia, and I'm sorry, Cynthia, I'm not quite understanding what that note means. You're changing place? No, 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 it, it's okay. It's okay. It's just a little... A little joke. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I get it now. I get it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so our next hymn is from More Voices Number One, and it's uh, all about building a home, a house, or rather building a house, a house of worship, that is, which um, I con strongly considered not using this Sunday, but uh, as we're not in our house of worship, but we are in all houses of worship as God is everywhere. Um, and so uh, we sing of building a house exactly where you are. And as Cynthia's family is going to remind us um, that all are welcome 
everywhere. Um, so listen for their little change. <laughs> um, so please feel free to mute yourself and let us join together in verses one and four of Let Us Build a House. to grab it and let us join together as we light our candle. This is a candle that today will represent the light of Christ, the light of Christ that can never, ever, ever be put away. We are in the season of Easter where we are reminded that even death cannot defeat God, cannot defeat Jesus the Christ. And so we light our candle this morning to remind us of this light, especially at times when we need it the most, a light that is always with us, a light that burns inside all of God's children. Thanks be to God. You're invited to join me in our call to worship this morning. A life without love would be no life at all. We worship in love today. A church without love would be no church at all. We worship in love today. A world without love would be no world at all. We worship in love today. Let us pray. O oh, gracious creator, God of all, our loving caregiver, we come to worship today to hear your good news, to hear of faith, of hope, and of love ringing out from your kingdom. We know that doubt, fear, and hatred can shake even the strongest, and so shape us into faithful, hopeful, loving people. Fill us with all of your mercy, your graciousness, and your love that passes all understanding. For we pray in the name of the one who showed us your mothering love, O oh God, as we pray in the words that he taught his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning, we have Donna Harvey, who will be sharing with us the very well-known words of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Not have love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now in faith, hope, and love abide. And these three, and the greatest of these, is love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. So this morning we have before us the very well-known words that Paul wrote to his beloved community, the people of Corinth, the church of the Corinthians. Now the people of Corinth were a congregation that was beloved and yet they were a congregation that was a struggling community. They were a Christian community deeply divided and they needed Paul's wisdom to help them to find some common ground, some unity. Now, one of their struggles was the belief that some spiritual gifts are better than others. And therefore, some people are better and worthier than others. Many of these gifts that Paul mentioned that they argue about Paul addresses in the beginning of our reading today as well as in the preceding chapter. The gifts of speaking in tongues, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of healing, of teaching, and of wisdom. Now, any of those gifts would be a wonderful attribute for anyone. However, if these gifts are not used with the gift of love alongside it, if these people with these gifts are not loved and loving, then they are not truly gifts at all. They are not the gifts as God intended them. If a teacher looks down upon his student without love, then the gift of teaching is not useful to anyone. If a doctor doesn't care about her patient, if she doesn't have the gift of love, then she will never be able to help her patient truly. For without love, these gifts are rendered useless. 
if I have faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. This chapter of the Bible is one that is very popular with weddings. And it is very popular for great reason. It is full of beautiful words and deep understanding about what true love really is. This love that Paul is writing to the Corinthians, however, is not about romantic love. It is not about the love between two partners. It was a community love, a love of neighbor, a love of family, a love of all. The kind of love that God has for all people. The kind of love that Jesus embodied in his life and in his death. The kind of love that puts others' needs before your own desires. Love like getting up out of bed for the umpteenth time to help your child to get back to sleep. Love that looks like cleaning up after your cat or your dog or your child or even your spouse has thrown up. Love that is like caring for someone who has a terminal or a chronic condition. These are not the warm fuzzies that we usually associate with love, the type of love we see in movies and television. But this is the love that Paul is talking about. This is the love that God gives to us, the love God has for us. This is the love that Jesus Christ showed to all, especially to those others deemed unworthy or unlovable. We are about to enter the 11th week of this pandemic. And just like any other stage of this pandemic, we are in yet another confusing time. We are in a time when the urgency for protection is starting to wear off, when the curve seems to be maybe flattening for now. We are in a time when people are exhausted, families are tired, our economy is suffering, People are jobless and feeling without hope. Now our government has begun to allow for some businesses to reopen with caution and protective measures in place. And we hear reports from other countries and other provinces about more loosening of restrictions on the meetings of people together. And we begin to wonder, will we be able to be a part of this? It is indeed a confusing time. And so people's exhaustion and their anxiety is coming out in ways that we may or may not agree with. There are folks who seem to be very concerned with getting a haircut or being able to go to a sporting event in person, something that might seem a bit superfluous. But these people are scared of this time of unknown, and they just want everything to go back to the way that they were before. For them, the symbol of getting a haircut or being able to go to a sporting event is what normal might look like. This is a time when people with very different viewpoints are starting to voice their concerns and voice their concerns very loudly and sometimes in unloving ways. People are arguing about the correct way forward in this time. All over social media, you see these arguments. All across the news, we see these arguments, these different viewpoints. There are folks who believe that we must continue to stay at home, even though some restrictions have loosened. And then there are those on the other extreme who believe that there never was a need to take such extreme precautions and protection against this virus. And in between are all of us. Just yesterday, there was a group of people objecting to lockdown measures who gathered in person for a second protest at Queen's Park in Toronto. And this past week, a letter was sent to the Premier from over 250 clergy people who believe that churches should be exempt from lockdown measures. And then there is another group of clergy who are planning to join their voices to a letter this coming week to the Premier 
stating that churches should not be exempt from protective measures. If you want to learn more about this coming letter, you can go to godlovescience.ca. 2,000 years later, and Christians are still at odds with one another. We all have different viewpoints. We all are able to see different things in this time of pandemic. No one person has all the information, which is why we are working hard to listen to all the different experts. Now the church in Corinth has reminded us that one gift is not better than another. One person is not better than another. When we have love, we have respect. And with love and respect, we are able to listen a little differently. And therefore, we are able to have a different and a fuller understanding. As Paul wrote, for we know only in part. Paul helped the Corinthians to learn the necessity of true love within any relationship, especially within a community full of many people. Paul helped them to better understand what love is and what they were missing when they weren't able to hear one another, when they put others above someone else. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, for love never ends. On this May the 17th of 2020, I have been fortunate enough to have been at Westminster for nearly 14 months. And I know, and I can say with certainty that we have this love that Paul writes to the Corinthians about. Like any community, like all humans, we are not perfect. There are times when our love is not always patient and kind. There are times when we might be a little bit envious or boastful or arrogant or maybe even rude with one another. However, in love, we forgive very easily. We love each other in the love that God first showed us. We have an abundance of gifts at Westminster. We are willing to share fully in love. We are willing to share the gifts that we have been given. We are willing to receive fully the gifts of others in love. We need to continue to listen to one another in love and to speak to one another in love. For when we are missing some voices, when we are not able to hear some voices, we do not have a clearer understanding. This is true for our church community as we discern the way forward, the safest way for the people of Westminster, the safest way for the people of the Waterloo region and beyond. And this is true for our governments. We all have different points of view. We all are able to come into a specific problem like a time of pandemic and see something different. In love, we must hear other people's gifts. In love, we must respect other people's gifts. In love, we must be patient, kind, not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. For as Paul writes, now I know only in part, and then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. When we share our gifts fully in love, when we receive others' gift, other, the gifts of others fully in love, we can begin to see the kingdom of God that Paul writes about in that perfect, beautiful love he shares with those Corinthians. 
Let us remember that God's love is always with us and let us see the love in others as we open our eyes, our ears, our hearts and our souls to all around us. For it is with love, God's perfect love, that will help us to bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things in this time and always. And thanks be to God for abundant, never ending love. Amen. As we enter into our time of the prayers of the people, I want to remind you that I will leave space toward the end of our time of prayers in the event that anybody would like to share out loud or behind the mute button uh, prayers that you are holding within your own hearts. Um, as we are recording this and we'll be putting it on uh, YouTube, I would also remind you to only use first names if you are praying about a specific person, <clears throat> um, just to respect everybody's privacy. I invite you to settle yourself wherever you might be, to feel your body supported by the chair, the couch, the floor and to breathe deep. As you breathe in, may you breathe in the spirit of God, the strengthening of Jesus Christ, the hope and the peace of the Holy Spirit. And as you breathe out, may you release unto God all those things that you are holding so deep within you. Let us offer to God our prayers of joy and thanksgiving, of care and of concern. O oh God of unending, abundant love, 
We thank you for reminders that your love is patient. And we give you thanks for all who have been patient with us, those who have taught and cared for us. And we pray for the patience to love others, to hear others as you love and you hear each of us. We give you thanks for the ways in which your love is kind. And we pray that you might give us the courage to be kind to others and to serve others with patience. To serve those who often come across as unkind, rude, difficult to love, or may feel like our enemies. Remind us that they are your children. They are our siblings and that all of us have been made in your image. Help us to see the love of Christ in all. God, your love is not pompous. It gives us insight to speak the truth in love and for the sake of your kingdom and not out of a need to appear clever or right. And in all our relationships, those that feel easy and especially those that feel difficult. Give us the wisdom to listen in love and help us to speak to one another with love. God, your love does not seek its own interests and we thank you and we pray for the many who serve you and serve the poor, serve the poor in spirit, serve all in need, those who give tirelessly of themselves. We remember that your love is not quick-tempered and we pray for the many these days who are angry. We especially pray for those who feel the need to be violent. And we pray deeply for their victims. We pray for children who fear, for elders who are abused. We pray for spouses and partners who feel trapped in relationships that cause injury physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Oh God, your love bears all things. And we come before you this morning with the heavy burdens, with the many cares that we hold, with the stress that we bear. And in this time, we lift up those prayers, the ones we have words for and the ones we do not. God, open our eyes to those around us, to the needs around us, and give us the wisdom to offer help. God, your love never fails. Even death does not trespass on the breadth and the depth of your love. We thank you for those we have loved in this life and who now dwell in the peace and the joy of your presence. May your comfort settle upon us all this day and forevermore. For we pray in the name of the one who you sent in love, Jesus the Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Before we move into our final um, hymn, I actually would like to share with you a blessing that I came across um, just recently. I thought <clears throat> um, was very appropriate for these days, for this time. Uh, it's called a blessing of the face masks. There are many among us um, who have face masks, who may be searching for face masks, who have been wearing face masks 
Um, there are those among us who have been making face masks, just as there are those among us who have been working tirelessly in love to create gowns um, for the medical centers around us. And so this is a beautiful blessing um, written by the Reverend Donna Buellmeyer, a pastor at Smith Memorial Church, uh, United Church of Christ in Hillsboro, NH. Is that New Hampshire? I'm not sure. Um, anyways, she wrote this blessing for those who create, who fund, who share, and who wear face masks during this COVID-19 pandemic. Blessed are those who give the gifts of their time and their talent to create face masks for others, for their community, for strangers, for they shall help to save the lives of many people. Blessed are those who make masks for others to wear so that together we may protect others, especially the most vulnerable who at another time have protected us when they worked as first responders, served in the military or taught us the school lessons of our childhood for they shall truly know the value of each human life. Blessed are those who work tirelessly to fill bins in the market or clotheslines across the front door of the church with masks of all sizes and types, for they shall know that this is grace, compassion, and love of neighbor. Blessed are the mask makers who send face masks to those who may be forgotten, to the agencies that support the homeless, nursing home staff and residents, the mentally ill, the prisoner, the tenderest among us, for they shall have respect and be remembered as the least of these. Blessed are those who crochet or print ear savers or hunt down the buttons that hook onto the face masks for comfort. For those who wear them for endless hours, for they shall see the face of God in each caregiver who wears one. Blessed are those who give of their own money for supplies and postage for face masks and ear savers because others' lives and comfort are more important than their personal checking account, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who wear face masks to show their care for others, who know that they can be passing on the virus that moves as stealth, infecting others days before their own symptoms emerge, for they shall be called the children of God. O Holy One, bless the mask, mask makers, those who create from cloth, flannel, elastic, wire, yarn, and buttons, the barriers that allow us to be out among others, yet keep them safe from what we might be silently harboring. Bless the mask wearers that we may see them as a sign of care and concern for others, that we may see your face beneath each mask. And bless us all that we may see that by covering our noses and mouths, we have opened our eyes and our hearts to one another. Amen. So friends, let us sing of Voices United 87, I am the light of the world. I remind you to mute yourselves. Thank you. 